Robert Mitchell has been 20 years in the airport, retired now, but two of those years he was team lead for the Snowbirds in 2007 and 2008, very active in uh, the air show scene today. But he's in North Vancouver with me this morning to talk about this. And uh, Mr. Mitchell, thank you for being our guest today. Oh, thank you, Heather. I'm pleased to be on. Well, I'm sorry it's on these in these circumstances for sure, um, because this is something the Snowbirds community wide, this wide community of people who have been part of this elite group over the years would have felt very keenly. What was your reaction when you heard of what had happened in Kamloops? I think like all the Snowbird family and the Airshow family uh, writ large, uh, I received a text and it was uh, just a text. I think that uh, Snowbird has crashed in Kamloops I, and there's a moment of disbelief. And then as I received more texts and I felt my phone buzzing, I, my, my heart sank and I felt you know, a little nausea in my stomach because this is all too real for uh, myself and the members of my team. And so the, the family is a very, very tight organization. There are only a few pilots that join the team every year. And on those teams, you travel day in, day out for upwards of six months together. And you know your teammates, um, in some cases better than your family and your siblings. And so it hits really hard. Even after all these years, uh, the family, the larger Snowbird family is very, very tight. I want to talk about what happened specifically during your seasons in just a moment. but. Not only, I mean, there are so many layers of tragedy here. The fact that the Snowbirds were out trying to boost the spirits of Canadians with Operation mm -hmm. Inspiration, that's one level. But even for you, beyond that, because personally you knew Captain Casey, as I understand it. What was the connection to her and, and how are you remembering her? Uh, Jen is, you know, was one of the uh, most amazing public affairs officers that I think the Snowbirds have ever seen. And being part of the airshow industry now as a civilian performer, I've come to know her as this wonderful, smiling uh, ray of sunshine that uh, everyone truly loved and and spoke about. The 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 snowbirds have an expression, you know, where you're always trying to engage the people and interact with Canadians, and she was the epitome of what the snowbirds are about. In that case, she was completely engaging and loved it, and she. Uh, she was one of those people that uh, just represented the, the Snowbirds so very well. That's a beautiful tribute mm. and similar to the sentiments mm. and uh, memories that we're getting from people who have known her, in, mm. whether it was in, in journalism before this or, or now with the military, most recently with the military. Mm. When you say, Mr. Mitchell, that you had a pit, uh, feeling in the pit of your stomach, it goes back many years to you. What happened uh, to you personally when you were team lead, the loss that you experienced within the Snowbird family? This, and as it turns out, uh, yesterday, the 18th, was the 13th anniversary. And so this weekend, I was coming into it reflecting on that uh, anyways, and then to find out there was a, a tragedy with Jen, um, it really brought myself and, and, and many of my teammates, in fact, we got together on a video conference yesterday just to just to talk about it and just be together yesterday because that uh, those are those are dark days I remember very well can that, you remind us of uh, the details there it was in Montana yeah it was so it was in uh, Great Falls Montana and it was just the start of our season in 2007 and during a practice mission the very first practice on the road um, Sean McCaughey, my uh, number two pilot, he, he lost his life He's, uh, as there was an, an issue with the lap belt in the seat and uh, lost control of the airplane and, and, and crashed in, in front of us. It was uh, very horrific uh, as, as this uh, recent crash was and it's, uh, it tears apart the team in, in a moment, in, a, in that exact moment of, of horror. It, um, it's, the, you know, it's the worst possible thing when you're so tight, as I, as I say, with the team. It, uh, it's very traumatic, and I know the team is suffering right now. So how will mm. the team come back together, and how will former members of the team perhaps help that? I think uh, the one thing that does occur in the immediate aftermath is the team comes together into an, an insular ball. And, uh, and they need to do that. And that's what we did back in 2007, where you, you, you eat together, you, you travel together, you just stay as a, as, a, as a unit because you need each other. And you need, 
you need to bond in that moment. And I will say that the bond is inexorable. It will be for life, as the case with my, with my team, as we got together yesterday. We are friends for life. Um, the, out of that tragedy forms a really, really tight, tight bond that uh, you will connect with uh, forever. And so in the days that follow, the team will the team will start looking for answers and and as they sort of come out of the, the the first day or two of shock and then start thinking about wanting to get home and wanting to be with their own families and as that part the human response part continues uh the investigative part continues as well maybe you can give us an idea because we we got word that no answers are going to be coming very quickly, that this could be an investigation that takes a full year. I mean, based on what mm -hmm. you experienced in 2007, is that really the case? Or do you have a good sense at this early juncture what might have gone wrong, even if those answers aren't completely finalized and formalized? In, in this case, I, I'm hoping they're going to have an early indication of where to look. And that's often the case is in the first days and weeks. They, they usually have an indication of some direction of inquiry. And it won't take a full year to get a, um, a basic understanding of what's going on. It will take potentially an entire year to get a, a detailed understanding of what went wrong. So I'm hopeful within the 30 first 30 days that there will be some indication or suggestion of what might have gone wrong and then uh, a discussion about the inquiry thereafter you experienced loss personally mm -hmm. in 2007 you know the snowbird mm -hmm. captain who was lost on this particular occasion and yet there you are uh, retired from the canadian military but still very much involved with the uh, with the air air show world in the United States, you still do that as mm. as part of your job. Can you explain this? Because I mean, this is not obviously. Mm. There have been a number of people lost, not just within the snowbirds, but within acrobatic teams around the world. And and you just sort of pause and wonder if the price is too great, or what is the ongoing appeal? The uh, for at a personal level, I, I'll. I'll pass on what motivated me. As a child, I saw the snowbirds fly and I said, one day I want to do that. I want to achieve something that's magical. And when I joined the Air Force, I, I became a fighter pilot and I worked my way to become a snowbird pilot. And initially I, I wanted to join for the excitement and the adventure. And I quickly found out that the Snowbirds is more than that. It's it, There's actually a real purpose to it. And I found that very personally enriching that I would get out of the jet after performing and feeling very fulfilled. But then I would be equally fulfilled as I would walk to that fence line and greet the kids, little girl, little boys stand there with their wide eyes. And all they want to do is talk to you and, and get a little insight in what, what that was about. And for us to share a bit of inspiration, not just about the, the, the Royal Canadian Air Force and what we're doing and sort of advocating for aviation, but also a message that you know, the, the human potential is amazing. And what we would do in airplanes is, is really a, a heightened level of, of the human potential in performance and mixing the human with, a, with a, a piece of machinery and doing something what I think is spectacular. And I fell in love with that. And I, as I retired from the Air Force, I had an opportunity to continue doing that, understanding the risks, uh, because there are heightened levels of risk in air show flying. And I think it's that, what, a little bit of that what draws us, that un, of, of people to watch air shows, is that it is something not everyone is willing or could do potentially. Mm -hmm. And to be able to observe that and get a little insight into people that are doing something very unique and seeing the magic of aviation and flight it's what motivates me, what's motivated me as a child. Robert Mitchell, thank you very much for sharing your uh, memories, number one, your perspective mm -hmm. as well on all of this. I appreciate the time and conversation with you today. Robert Mitchell in North Vancouver. Thank you, Heather.